Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at the general form of a first order linear partial differential equation. So here it is. It's a function of x and y times the partial of u with respect to x plus a function of x and y times the partial of u with respect to y plus a function of x and y times u equals a function of x and y. That's the general form with all the potential terms. Now, depending upon the values of A, B, C, and R, we have different techniques to solve these particular, uh, these particular or these types of differential equations. And of course, since there's a lot of different combinations, there are a lot of different techniques. But let's say that either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. That kind of simplifies it. Then we end up with an equation that looks like this or an equation that looks like this. And then we can start employing techniques that we're used to using when we had ordinary differential equations. For example, finding the integrating factor. What we can do here is we can then say, okay, if we had an equation that looks similar to this one, which is either this one or that one, and so here's an ordinary differential equation, we have dy dx or, or parcel of u with respect to x or parcel of u with respect to y, so the same kind of approach. And then we want to get rid of a, so we want to divide everything by a, so we have a format that looks exactly like this. And then we can bring this term to the left, then we realize we have two terms, we can multiply both sides by dx, spread out the variables like this, or separate the variables dy and dx. In this case we have the separation of parcel of u and parcel of x, or parcel of x and parcel of y, and if we do that, we can then come up with an integrating factor that will look something like x to the n, y to the n, or sometimes with ordinary, with not ordinary, but with partial differential equations, we sometimes get away with using an integrating factor that may only have an x or a y. For example, x to the m, uh, multiply that with both of the terms, and then all we have to do is find the values for m, or in this case, find the values for m and n. So again, once we have something that looks like this, or looks like that, we can employ some of the same techniques that we've learned before with ordinary differential equations. I guess you're going to want to see some examples of that, and we'll have some examples for you, but at least I want to introduce you to some basic techniques and how to solve the general form of that equation. And that's how it's done.